in the during each talk. Uh, so okay, so being that said, uh, the first speaker of today is Ali Rashapur. Uh, the title of his uh, talk is going to be heat transfer at the solid liquid interface. Uh, so Ali, whenever you want to start, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Oriel. Uh, so let me share my uh, screen, my entire screen and screen number two. Can you hear, uh, can you see my desktop? Nope. Okay. Now we can. Okay. Perfect. And the laser, it is very important to yes. see the laser. Yeah, okay. I would like to remind everyone to mute your microphone, of course, yeah. not really. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, hi, everyone. Again, um, uh, let me introduce myself again. My name is Ali uh, Rajapur. Uh, I hope you enjoy this workshop uh, uh, today. Um, my uh, affiliation is from uh, IKIU, which is a, a university in Qazvin, and also uh, from IPM, which is an institute in uh, fundamental science in Tehran. Um, in my group, uh, uh, the focus of my group is working on thermal transport in uh, nanostructures uh, and our approach is more computational uh, using uh, molecular dynamics uh, simulation, uh, lattice uh, dynamics to study the phononic uh, properties of uh, materials and uh, finite element uh, method, finite volume method as a continuum uh, approach and also density functional theory and Boltzmann transport equation and Monte Carlo and so on. Uh, uh, in this uh, presentation, the main focus of my talk is on the uh, heat transfer at the interface between uh, solid and liquid. When we have two different objects, uh, even if they are in uh, complete contact, we see a thermal resistance at the interface. Uh, this resistance uh, at nanoscale may be greater than the thermal resistance of each body. Of course, uh, this resistance is different uh, from the resistance and due to incomplete contact and of course, uh, its value uh, is uh, much less uh, than the thermal resistance due to insufficient physical contact. But this resistance uh, becomes important uh, at the nano scale. And we call it interfacial thermal resistance or conductance, its reverse value, or another name is capizza. Uh, resistance. So I will focus uh, on the application of this resistance uh, in um, fluidic systems. Uh, considering the application, uh, one is the treatment of cancer uh, with the help of phototermal therapy. A cancer tissue could be destroyed by laser heating and uh, in this regard uh, gold nanoparticles are used to better heat the tissues and to transfer heat uh, to the environment which could be considered generally uh, as water. Uh, in this process, uh, the interfacial thermal resistance between uh, gold and water could be a bottleneck. Therefore, reducing this resistance can lead to a reduction of the required uh, laser power. 
another application uh, Ali, is Ali, I had a question for you. What what what's the local temperature that you need to um, to heal these cancer tumors? Uh, uh, plus ten to the uh, body temperature, ten or twenty. That's it. Something like yeah, yeah. Okay, that's it. okay. And the laser power is uh, at the order of a, a nanowatt or something like that. Yeah. So, so people have studied what happens with a mouse if you put a laser because this should be also be dangerous, no? Uh, yeah, yeah. It could. Uh, I mean, it it should be uh, concentrated on the on the uh, specific tissue. So we use a, a gold nanoparticle to locally hit the tissue. If I understand your question. Yeah, yes. No, I'm, I'm worried yeah. by, by the poor mouse that takes the, the, this light, which can <laughs> burn the skin or, or create a secondary effects in the, in the organs of the, the mouse. No. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. okay. And uh, yeah. Another application is uh, is nanofluids. Uh, to define a nanofluid, uh, it is a fluid that contains uh, nanoparticles. Uh, since uh, the thermal conductivity of uh, this nanofluid is higher than the base fluid, which is uh, which can be generally water, uh, it can be applicable in many indus industrial applications uh, like car radiators, leading to a reduction in radiator size because we use a fluid with higher thermal conductivity so we can reduce the size of the uh, radiator and thus a reduction in fuel consumption. And in these uh, fluids, uh, and the thermal resistance between uh, nanoparticles, here is a silver nanoparticle for example, uh, so the thermal resistance between the nanoparticle and the surrounding fluid is uh, very important to engineer the properties of the of the liquid. Uh, about uh, our ongoing projects in these applications, uh, I would like uh, to talk about the water shells uh, around the nanoparticle. As uh, we know, a shell of water is uh, formed around the particle in the water, which has different properties from the bulk water. This layer, because of the solid-liquid interaction, this layer has higher thermal conductivity, a higher density, and also higher viscosity. Uh, also, this layer is very thin. It can be important at the nanoscale. Uh, this project uh, is being implemented uh, in collaboration with uh, Sami Marabia from uh, Lyon, uh, ILM, and also Ali, and two of my uh, postdoctoral uh, researchers, Fatime and uh, Reza. Uh, we have also uh, investigated. Uh, Ali, 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 just a yes. just a, 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 a question and a comment. You I mean you mentioned um, viscosity? Viscosity. And I mean, as far as I know, it, it you know it, it's rather difficult to uh, come up with estimates of um, uh, let's say lo local local estimates of viscosity. Uh, uh, so, for example, in these models that you use, do you? Um, how do you treat the viscosity as it goes from bulk to the surface? Is it constant? Does it change? Mm. Uh, the the viscosity of uh, the viscosity of this layer uh, is uh, ten times greater than the viscosity of the of the bulk. And uh, the thermal conductivity is fifty percent larger than but, the bulk. How do, how do you know? But how do you, how do you know that it's Ten times larger mm. the viscosity. Uh, we, we measured by molecular dynamic simulation. Actually, in experiments, it is very difficult to measure the uh, <coughs> local uh, viscosity of each shell. It's uh, uh, almost impossible to have the uh, viscosity distribution uh, by uh, experimental devices. But uh, by molecular dynamics, uh, we uh, there are several methods. Uh, one is a green cubo formalism we divided the ah, so you've the, done 
yeah, we divided the. Uh, okay, okay, okay. And and you were able to make it work. Yeah. Uh, okay, that's impressive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And All right. no, thanks. That that's good. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, another uh, project uh, is to investigate the cooling uh, of uh, amino acids uh, in water, and calculated the the relaxation time for different types of uh, hydrophilic and hydrophobic amino acids. Uh, we have uh, found uh, uh, that at a given mass, as you see, uh, the hydrophilic amino acids cool uh, faster than the hydrophobic amino acids. Uh, and uh, we studied uh, the interfacial thermal resistance between different amino acids, 19 amino acids, uh, and water, and calculated the distribution of the uh, cooling time of uh, each amino acid. And uh, this guy is Haydar, who did the, the project. Uh, he's not an amino acid, but he's a combination of many amino acids. Uh, sorry, I think there was a question. There was a... Yeah. I, I, sorry, I don't see the, the chat uh, or... So please let me know if there is any question. Uh, I had a question in the previous slide. Uh, in that, you mentioned that the thermal conductivity, the local thermal conductivity is 50% uh, higher than the bulk. So shouldn't yeah. it depend on the surface properties of the nanoparticle also? Uh, of course. So, uh, what is the uh, local thermal, thermal conductivity depend on? Just on the density of the water? Uh, the local thermal conductivity, what is the value you mean? No, no, How, what does it depend on? Does it just depend on the density of the water around the... Mm, no, 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 it depends on many uh, parameters, for example, on the solid fluid interaction or, uh, or the surface uh, of the... I mean, if there are some surfactant on the, on the surface, uh, it depends, of course, on the... Uh, surface uh, of the nanoparticle, but the most influential uh, parameter is the solid-liquid interaction. I mean, the strength of the interaction. Um, and for different uh, liquids, it is different, the enhancement of the thermal conductivity. So, so, so it, like, yeah. okay, the 50 percent greater uh, local thermal conductivity is for one type of nanoparticle? Yeah, 50 percent for water. Uh, case. For other case, it could be different, if I understand also, your question. Also for some kind of nanoparticle? Uh, of course. If you uh, replace, for example, the uh, silver, here is the silver nanoparticle. If you replace the silver with gold or with silica or any other material, you get uh, uh, different values of uh, enhancement. But um, the range should be, I mean, between 20 or to 100 percent. Thank you very much. We have another question from Neda. Go ahead, Neda. <laughs> yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So, um, Ali, you mentioned that uh, where you have uh, the more, um, when you have a higher water density, you also you have seen a higher thermal conductivity. Mm hmm and um, I missed that part. So what did you uh, explain for the reason? For the reason? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the reason could be, I mean, and the structure of uh, water around, uh, around the nanoparticle is uh, more solid-like behavior because mm -hmm. it is under uh, interaction of, a strong interaction of uh, the, the solid, so uh, if we plot the, for example, radial distribution function or yeah. see the structure of the molecules around nanoparticles, they are more structured than the, uh, than the than other molecules, water molecules. So um, this strong interaction leads to uh, higher density and also uh, higher uh, thermal conductivity and also higher viscosity. 
Okay, and have it. you have you seen this the same effect with different types of nanoparticles or? Yeah, uh, yeah. Gold. Uh, we examine for gold, uh, silver, uh, simple uh, Leonard Jones interaction uh, solids, uh, alumina. Yeah, different kinds of uh, materials. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, another project that we are uh, collaborating with uh, Edgar uh, is an idea that we got uh, from a very interesting uh, recent paper. In this nature paper, uh, they created the Carnot cycle using uh, an optically trapped particle. And uh, this uh, nice simulation is an attempt uh, by Said uh, to find out more about how heat is distributed around uh, the oscillating uh, particle. And as you see uh, uh, in this nice paper, we see uh, an ideal cycle, a zero uh, entropy uh, variation. And we try to, this is an experiment done by Raul and, and his group, who is present here and he can uh, explain more about the experiment, but uh, we are focusing on the simulation. So we oscillate uh, the particle by noise, by random force, and you see uh, the temperature distribution around a particle. Uh, so this project is ongoing and uh, we are working on to, to have a smooth temperature distribution and there are uh, some technical uh, computational things that we should do to have better uh, simulation. Uh, okay, and yeah, um, question? Mailing, Sorry. Pool? Yes, Sorry? I had a question. Yes, please. Yeah, uh, for uh, a small number of uh, atom uh, molecules, in fact, uh, in your simulation, how did you measure uh, temperature? It should have a, a lot of, um, I mean, uh, uncertainty. Is that right? Yeah, uh, this is a good question. Uh, so uh, we had to increase the the size of the simulation and also getting average on many time steps uh -huh, yeah. Uh, yeah to have a i mean a good uh, uh less on uh, yeah statistical uncertainty uh -huh, yeah, yeah. And reduce the noise. yeah yeah thank you thank you hey, ali we have three minutes left okay and this is my last slide and the last project that I talk uh, about is a simulation of the reverse heat transfer. Uh, it has recently been shown by a statistical thermodynamics that uh, the heat can be transferred uh, from a cold source to a hot source uh, by creating non-Gaussian noise in the, in the cold bath. And uh, in this simulation, uh, we have created uh, two completely isolated heat source. So the baths are isolated. And, and the, the only connection uh, between uh, two particles in, is a spring uh, between two particles. And we try to create a series of uh, non-Gaussian noises to see in the simulation environment what has been uh, to see what has been suggested by statistical uh, thermodynamics uh, and this reverse heat transfer can also be created by uh, Maxwell's uh, demon and through opening uh, and closing a gate to uh, allow only the particles with the highest kinetic energy to pass from the cold uh, best to the to the hot source and we are working uh, on this project and any idea uh, to 
to help it to the reverse heat uh, is appreciated. Uh, so the summary of my talk uh, was on liquid layering around the nanoparticle, heat transfer from amino acids to the water, temperature distribution around an optically trapped particle and reverse heat transfer, which means energy flow from the cold to the hot system induced by non-Gaussian uh, thermal fluctuations. And thanks for your attention. Thanks a lot, Ali. Uh, it was a very, very interesting talk. Uh, Thank you. I give you an applause in the name of everyone.